I'm going to just pray for us tonight. I'm going to ask our ushers to come, then we're going to receive our Sunday evening offering. We're so happy to have Brother Tommy and Sister Teresa with us uh, this evening, and we're excited to have them share uh, what the Lord is doing uh, through them and with them. And, um, you know, I'm one of those people I can tell within five seconds if I like you or not. Are y'all like that? And I like both of them. So I, I just knew it within five seconds. Don't ask me if I like you because I can't lie in church, all right? Amen? All right, good. All right, I'm, <laughs> don't ask me, Eric. You specifically, don't ask me now. All right? No, I'm just kidding. Amen. But we're so happy to have them this evening. They're going to share with us, and uh, we're excited to hear what they have to say. So we're not going to take any prayer requests uh, out loud because I want to give them some time to speak to us. And I want our uh, ushers to come this evening. We're going to go ahead and receive our Sunday evening offering. And uh, we're, they're going to come. I'm going to pray for us. And then Brother David will lead us. And uh, then after he's done, we want y'all to just come and share with us what, uh, what the Lord's doing through you. And uh, we're excited uh, to hear. Uh, we've, we've been on both extremes, I guess, of the thermometer. This morning we had a man and his wife uh, who are missionaries to Alaska. And uh, y'all are from Uganda. That's about as cold as it can get, and that's probably about as hot as it can get, right? And uh, so we're, we're on both extremes, uh, and so we're just happy to have them uh, this evening. But I like, uh, I like that word the brother used this morning, whosoever. I'm glad it's a whosoever gospel, amen? It's for all who will believe, and I thank God for that this evening. So I'm going to pray for us, then we're going to receive our offering. Lord, we thank you for bringing us here to this place tonight. And God, giving us the opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, thank you for the way you met with us this morning. We thank you for feeling your presence and your spirit so real in this place. And God, I ask you that you meet with us again tonight. Lord, give our brother and sister a word for us that we would be encouraged about missions, encouraged about the gospel, and encouraged about what you're doing through them and through men and women all over this globe for the cause of your kingdom. And God, let us remember that as we receive this offering tonight, Lord, this is exactly what we're doing with this money that we receive. We're sending it out, Lord, to support people all over the world. And God, we're, we're using it right here at home to make a difference uh, in the lives of the people here in Polk County. So Lord, help us to be faithful in our giving and help us to be cheerful givers. We love you and we thank you. Meet with us tonight. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Let's stand and sing tonight. Receive our offering. Let's turn to page 100, or page 28. It's a grand and glorious feeling. I love this old song right here. And you help me sing it. Tell the 
old story of his love I'll ever see. What a grand and glorious feeling just to be walking with my King. Amen. Thank you. That sounded really good. Up the top. Sister Teresa, y'all come on ahead and uh, just share whatever God's laid on your heart. Well, it's a blessing to be here today, and uh, I want to share the work that the Lord's doing there in Uganda, Africa. And uh, let me get this to my mouth where you can hear me now. But whatever. Anyway, I have something here. I want to. I want to give to the pastor before I. There's your. Ballpoint pen, hand hand card. Maybe that'll speed you up and get you to Africa. <laughs> Amen. Well, we're looking forward to sharing the work that the Lord's doing there in Uganda. We want to show you some pictures, and I think a pic picture sometimes speaks a thousand words, so you can understand the situations that uh, that others have in this world today, and how much we ought to be thanking our Lord and Savior for. The things that we have so we're going to show you some pictures and here we'll go all right if you don't if you're not up on your geography and everything there is right there at the yellow i mean right there where the arrow is pointing in the little yellow spot is lake victoria second largest freshwater lake in the world and that's where the source of the nile river begins we actually live within less than a mile from the source of the nile river and it goes down near our school now there it goes right there. We're about uh, three or four miles down. But the thing over, over there is beautiful because we're only about 40 miles from the equator, you know, and we have two rainy seasons, so it's, it does pretty good, even though it does get wrong, well, rather warm. But uh, it, it's a beautiful country. Uh, uh, all the trees are blooming year-round and everything, so it's a very beautiful thing. So y'all are going to love it when you get there. But when you go out into the villages out there, this is what you run into. This is the way the people are living out in the villages. These little mud huts with the straw roofs and all that. And like I told you, we got two rainy seasons, and you know, a lot of that rain, that, that, that don't last a long time. It leaks down in there. Now, you people just think about putting your child to sleeping on a dirt floor in a place like this every night and whatever. However... When, when you get home, you, you thank the Lord that you've got a bed to go to. Things like that. We need to really praise the Lord for having it all. But the good thing about it is they're very receptive. Many of these people out there in the villages, have never, they've never had a Bible. They've never heard about the Lord and whatever. And when you give them what the Lord has said and he speaks to them, we have many, many souls saved out there in these villages. And thank the Lord for that. Uh, ladies, this is the uh, uh, kind of the grocery store. It's not exactly like Tingly Wiggly, but it's no problem. But it's, we got some of the same things. You see right here, that's the vegetable section. There's pineapples and bananas and there's some tomatoes and some onions. And now the chickens are a whole lot fresher than what we get. <laughs> <laughs> At least they're pinned up. <laughs> this is uh, Matoki. This is their staple food. And uh, matoki, it's a, it's a green banana, and you eat it, you peel it, and you kind of mash it together and wrap it in the banana leaf, the big banana leaves off the tree, put it over a steaming pot of water and steam it. Then you take peanuts, mash that up, and make a kind of a sauce and pour that over. Now, that sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> well, try to eat it. I'll just say that. Maybe. But back here, back here is the, right there is the meat section. I'll give you a close-up. There's the meat department. Uh, we live about four hours from the from the airport, and the strange thing happens. We pick up every, our visitors at the airport, and you see these all up and down the road. By the time we get to our house, everybody's vegetarians. <laughs> Nobody wants to eat. But seriously, we don't. There is a grocery store where we can buy, you know, packaged meat like we eat here. But that is what that is very common for the uh, Uganda people. And ladies, this is the beauty shop. This is actually a working beauty shop there in Uganda. It's outside one of the largest tourist attractions there. Um, it, the Nile 
river has Category 5 rapids, so a lot of people come and you know want to ride the rapids, and this is just outside of that uh, uh, tourist attraction. And this is a shoe store in the village. You see uh, the size of that shoe store. Uh, most of us, if we're honest, we have closets bigger than that entire store right there. And the Lord always uses this picture to convict me because look at the name of it. Blessed Shoe Center. And I always, every time I see this picture, no matter how many times I see it, I'm always convicted that I'm not nearly grateful enough for everything he's given me. This is one of the churches out in the villages out there. This one actually has, they call them iron sheets, got a tin roof on it, uh, which is, you know, a blessing to them because many times you'll just be under trees and et cetera, you know. So <clears throat> that's another thing. And there ain't no air conditioning over there either. And I have seen it 126 degrees, so it's, it gets rather warm and all. But we have many, many people come to these village churches out there to hear about our Lord. So uh, <clears throat> I encourage you to be here every time those doors open. I'd be here to praise the Lord and worship Him. This is uh, a lady that one of the ladies we went to visit. This is actually her home. That is her kitchen behind her. These ladies have a very hard life, physically hard life. Just to give you a sad example of their life, in order for this lady to give her child a clean drink of water, she has to go somewhere and find firewood that she's allowed to cut down. Then she has to cut that down, and she has to bring it back to her home. Then she has to go somewhere and find water and haul that back to her home. And then she has to you know, cut that firewood up, build a fire, boil the water, then let it cool, simply to give her child a clean, safe drink of water. So I want to challenge you and encourage you to, the next, I mean, you know, we have water available everywhere, bottles, and you just drink it right out of the tap, whatever. I want to encourage you, the next time you get a good drink of water, just think about these ladies and say a prayer for them. And I want to tell you, gentlemen, about these ladies over there. I was coming out there uh, witnessing one day in the village, and I met a woman coming from the, bo uh, the creek down there with, she had five gallons of water in each hand and five gallons sitting on top of her head and had a baby tied on her back walking up through there. You don't mess with them, brother. I mean, they are. <clears throat> That's the truth, too. Mm. Here they are right here. As the Lord has provided over the years, we've been able to go into uh, five different villages and dig a borehole for them where they could have a well and get clean water and we put the pumps in there and all of that stuff, you know. And uh, so th that, that's a great and wonderful thing for them to have so they don't have to do the boiling and et cetera and all of that stuff, you know. But, uh, and that you, as you see, the children right there do a lot of the water carrying back to their houses too. The, you don't just sit around over there as a child. You've got jobs to do just like everybody else. So it's, it's very wonderful to see them, though, when they can get the clean water. Because most of the time, that's what they're doing right here, is getting the water in them five-gallon uh, jerry cans, they call them, and carrying them. But what they don't see, you don't see right here is they're right in the middle of a cow pasture. So you can imagine the conditions of that water and everything right there. It really needs to be boiled. But here's a tricky one right here. I went to this house one day, and it was during rainy season. What they was doing is letting the rain run down the valleys of the, of the tin sheets up on top, you know, and they had little canes laying against them. It run down through there and hit that cane, run down the cane, and go into the jerry can and all. I thought that was African engineering right there. Good. But it saved them from having, but you can imagine how dirty it was. Yeah, just cleaning all the dust and whatever off of this. So, it, you know, it still had to be uh, heated. Now here's one of the motorcycles. In our ministry, we've, able, we've got uh, three prison ministries, three hospital ministries, and for our men, our nationals, to go to the different areas like that, the Lord has provided, and we've been able to buy five motorcycles for them over there. Now, they do things with motorcycles over there that you wouldn't believe. I want you to see some of the things that, that you'll see over there. Don't try that when you see it. That's five, five young men riding one motorcycle. Hmm? I've, you know, it was always tough for me to ride with two on a motorcycle, much less five. 
But that wasn't, that wasn't the best one I ever seen riding a motorcycle. Look at this next picture. That's a Holstein milk cow. <laughs> and how they got it on the motorcycle, I'm not sure, but when, when we come back out of the village, they had unloaded it off of that thing, and the cow was walking around, you know, like that, because I guess laying, hanging upside down. But, uh, but they have to use what they have. You see many, many things. Sometimes you see motorcycles coming down through there with 10-foot-long pieces of steel across their motorcycles going down the road, 10 foot wide. So, I mean, you know, it's, but you have to use what you got, so. And here we are inside the prisons. Now, I tell a lot of people this. When you go to prison over there, friend, if, I, if you'd take some of our prisoners right here and put them over there for about a week, they would never get in trouble again, I promise you. They don't furnish you with anything over there. There ain't no beds in there. If you don't have a family member, somebody to bring you the little four-inch foam mattresses or a, a blanket or something like that, you'll sleep on the uh, cement floor and that's it. And uh, they're actually so indecent. Most of the time, they may get a uniform every five or six years or something, but I've been in there when I couldn't even take photographs. It was, I mean, it was a horrible situation, you know. And they don't have facilities in there, and a little room, it'll be... 10, 12 feet wide and 20 feet long, something like that, there'll be 25, 30 men in there. So you can imagine the situations. It's, it's horrible. But, uh, you know, it's like every one of us. Sometimes you have to go to the bottom to know to look up. And we have many souls saved in these prisons, and I thank the Lord for that ministry too. And we're, del we're delivering soap right there. I'm sorry. This is inside, like Tommy said, we have three hospitals where we have uh, preachers that go in there on a daily basis, and this is inside the children's hospital there in Virginia, uh, and uh, there's three wards, they all look just like this, as you can see, they're all crowded. Health care is free in Uganda, it's, it's run by the government, so it doesn't cost you anything to go in and, and have your child, you just go in and find a place for your child. It's not uncommon to see two or three children sharing the same bed, but you go in and find a place for your child, and the doctor will come around and see your child and tell you what you need. The problem comes in is because the government doesn't have enough money to buy the medicines or the equipment or things like that. We've been in there when one time there was a young mother who her baby was dehydrated, and uh, she had gotten enough money to buy the, the fluid and the tube, but she didn't have a needle. So what we do as a ministry is we give our preachers so much money every month and when they find people in that situation they go to town to the pharmacy buy what they need and bring it back and, and make sure that it's given to that child free of charge. Now the mothers if they want they there is no food service, they don't feed them anything if they they have to go outside and cook over an open fire in order to feed their children while they're in the hospital. And if they want to stay with them, they have to sleep on the floor under those beds. This is my favorite place to go. This is the maternity ward. Now, it looks pretty nice in this picture, but if you go in there, you see those windows down through there. Most of them are knocked out, and it's just jagged glass sticking up. I've been in there when there were chickens, you know, running around, and nobody seemed to be concerned about it but me. They just <laughs> ran around. But as you can see, there's one bed after another in there. And what we do is we go in, we have the new little Polaroid camera. We'll take a picture of the baby, give that to the mother as a gift, because they'll never have a picture of their baby. And then we have ladies who make us the little bonnets and we collect the little receiving blankets and uh, we take that in and give that to them as a gift. Anything we can do just to show them the love of God, just Amen. to show them somebody cares about you and somebody loves you. And we have a lot of ladies come to know Christ through this ministry. And this is our uh, seminary students right here. The Lord's also provided us with two seminaries there, and it looks like we may have another one in the next, within the next year. We may, we're looking at that very closely. But anyway, these, these students right here, we teach them, we teach them right out of the King James Bible exactly what the Bible tells them to do and whatever, because over there we've got many religions that you don't even have here. And uh, so that, that's not following the Lord. And so we, we're t teaching them so that they can be out into the other churches and what have you where they'll be giving God's words. And we thank the Lord for that too. 
We have a school there. The Lord started a school there in 2003, and uh, the school is run through a child sponsorship program whereby people here sponsor a child for $20 a month. It gives them two meals a day, uh, two uniforms a year, all their books, pens, pencils, all of that. This is just a few of our little nursery children. We actually have about 93 children this age, and then we have first grade through seventh grade. Uh, Uganda doesn't have an eighth grade, and uh, then they have that go into four years of high school. Then we have four years of high school. This is our latest graduating class, uh, and uh, we're real excited about what the Lord's doing. We're we're now seeing uh, these children. We've had several of these young ladies who graduated. They went on to a vocational school. They came back with a, a certificate to teach in nursery, and they're now teaching at our school. Then we have some of the young men who have graduated. They've gone to our seminary, and now they're full-time uh, preachers in the ministry. So we're excited to see the Lord bringing these young people back into the ministry to work. And with a school like this, the one, one thing that we have over there that you ain't got here in America, that I wish we did, but you don't have, Every one of our teachers are born-again Christian teachers. And those, those children get to hear about Jesus every class that they're in. So we thank the Lord for that. And this is our new nursery classroom. We got it built just before we left to come home. And uh, we thank the Lord for that. That's a, a baby middle and top class right there. And uh, we, we now have cement blocks over there. We used to have to build everything out of them old handmade bricks, you know, it's just mud with straw packed in it and what have you, you know, but we made these out of cement blocks. And Teresa painted the inside, her and my granddaughter. And uh, we thank the Lord for that. And when these children got back to school and came and seen that, they were tickled to death. Boy, I mean, they were thrilled over that. One of our biggest struggles has been to get books to the children. And a lot of schools and, and different places here would donate books, but the, but the cost to ship them is just astronomical. And so the Lord put us together with a lady out of Texas. That's her ministry. All she does is collect books and ship them and put libraries in schools in Uganda. So now we have a school in our primary and in our high school, and that has just opened up a whole new world for these children. And this is inside our kitchen. When we first got the... Uh, kitchen built and everything we had to cook over uh, just to open like a campfire more or less thing and whatever to feed and when you got 457 children and uh you know 50 something teachers and workers are running around it takes a lot to cook for them you know and uh i was telling the people in uh, at a church here in, uh, in there in Carrollton about it and the man that was there was the welder for uh west central technical school he was the head the teacher and everything, he came over with three of his men and built me this wood stove right here. That's eight feet long. So, but it, it the pots that you cook with over are quite different from what y'all are accustomed to. Our pots are four feet in diameter and 18 inches deep. Takes a lot of beans or a lot of rice to go in there. <laughs> but, but the Lord, thank the Lord, we're we're now with that sponsorship program and everything. We provide two meals a day. We give them porridge in the mornings, and we add milk and sugar to that, you know, so that uh, it'll be more uh, energetic for them and everything. So, and it provides them two meals a day because, you know, they have to start walking from several miles away to get there at school time, you know. There ain't no buses or anything like that. So, anyway, we thank the Lord for that and for those kids to have two meals a day. It's amazing. And here they are out there eating. Now, this was right after we got it started and whatever. And they were just eating and having a good time. There's a church come over there and said, you know, they're sitting out there under the trees eating. Well, that's good. And uh, everything they said, but uh, this, this group from this church says, well, why don't you build them tables? Us? Right now, the Lord hadn't provided. So anyway, uh, he said, well, we'll do it. So I went to town and whatever. And when I got out, we had made eight of these 14-foot-long uh, uh, picnic tables. And the kids, you see, they love it. They, uh, they don't mind sitting. Uh, they don't have to sit far apart. They'll just get... So we thank the Lord for that. They really enjoyed it. But the Lord wasn't finished then. See, we still had it out there under the trees, and during the rainy seasons and all, that can get pretty wet and messy and whatever. So, But the Lord wasn't finished again. 
He built us a shed. This is our cafeteria now. So we got all those tables under there, and we just thank the Lord so much for those. Those children can eat out of the rain now. Hallelujah. And we have our own cows. Over the years, we've been able to buy a little bit more land as the Lord provides, you know, and now we've got 16 acres of land, and uh, we've got uh, eight cows, and uh, we, that's where we get our milk and everything from, you know, and, and uh, of course, we have goats, too, you know, and, uh, of course, when these cows have a calf, you know, or something, we'll let him stay around for about a year, and then we'll invite him and some of the goats to lunch, you know, and so, so, <clears throat> yeah. As the Lord provides, we have some good, good meat meals then, you know. But thank the Lord for that. And up until, up until last year, we had no water. Everything had to be brought from, I don't know, I'd say it was well over, a, it's close to a half a mile to the nearest spring down there. And they'd have to go with bicycles down there, and they, they'd put six of them five-gallon cans on that bicycle <laughs> and go down there pushing it now, not riding it, and go down there and fill them up, bring them back up there, and that's what they cooked with and all of that thing with. Last, uh, one year ago, they come out and they put water out there. We've got running water. But it's not real dependable. Sometimes it's off for three or four days and all, so that's the reason I put this reservoir tank up out there so that we can have water, you know, and, and provide for them. We, and, you're talking about some excited women now. These women have been washing these pots and these dishes and all of this stuff back in the kitchen. When they come in there one day and we had already put in and had two faucets in their kitchen. Yeah, that may not sound like nothing to you, but they were thrilled to death. I mean, you know, we haven't got to go tote these buckets no more. So we thank the Lord for that too. And we also, we never had electricity out there either. We're out in a pretty far little village and everything, but we also got electricity out there now. Right up on top of there, there's our security lights. We have guards out there uh, 24 hours a day, you know, because a lot of people want to come through. Although we did put a fence around the building, but uh, the, the land, but uh, we still have to watch after them. We've got them security lights on several of the buildings out there, and we thank the Lord. We're praying that the Lord will provide uh, one day that we can. We do have electricity in our church. We've got uh, three outlets in there that actually work. Ain't no air conditioning in there now, but uh, we thank the Lord for that. This is our choir director from Holy Ground. He came and he brought a bunch of sound equipment with him out there. And uh, we were able to set this up, and he trained. He stayed there for about 10 days and worked with these men and got them where they could handle that. And now we actually have microphones where you can sing on the microphones and preach on the microphones. So it's, it's amazing. We thank the Lord. This is our church right here. It was originally built out of those handmade bricks. Uh, that Indian company hadn't come in and started making cement blocks at that time. But when we started building this uh, bricks right here, they take, uh, they take mud and mix it with straw and whatever and put it in. They stack up a big stack of it, then build a fire in it and, uh, you know, set fire to it for seven days, you know, and, and that's the best bricks you got. Well, the rainy seasons will begin to deteriorate those bricks if, you don't, if you're not careful and everything. So we came home one time. I didn't know this. This had been a two or three years or three or four years after the church was built. And you could see a little bit of problems with the brick. But we came home, and we didn't realize that they had been saving their offerings, which they don't have much offerings, but they had saved it. And they had plastered in. That's how much they love their church. They had in plastered themselves, plastered the entire outside of that church to prevent it from being deteriorated. And we thank the Lord for that, too. And we had another offering that came in, and that we were able to buy Bibles with it. Those are Luganda Bibles. And uh, we got, uh, I think it's uh, six cases of them. There's some in there. But anyway, we were able to uh, share them with the prison ministries, the hospitals, and, and the other churches and things like that. Because many people over there, many, many people don't have a Bible. You know, that's something I encourage you, again, to thank the Lord for. And don't go home with it and lay it down. 
Don't go home and put it on the shelf and let it collect dust and everything. That's God's Word. You want it every day, every day. Read God's Word. That's how you come closer. I see your Bible, brother. <laughs> but do you read it? <laughs> okay. Well, this is our pastor right here. This is Pastor Fred McGinney, and uh, he's fixing to give out Bibles there at our church. And I'm, I'm going to show you how excited they get. I mean, they don't stand back and wait on this, that, and the other. And they get very excited to have a Bible over there. So thank the Lord for that. And this one right here, he's the village chief of this area. And the thing that was amazing, he's a, he, he was a uh, Muslim. And uh, he came to me, let's see, it was three years ago. It was three years ago he came to me. This is the reason you need to raise these children in God's way. But anyway, he came to me three years ago, and him a Muslim, and asked me could he put his three-year-old boy in our nursery classes. Well, over there, if uh, a child comes home and says they're saved, they may get thrown completely out of the home, and they may get beaten, or it can be worse and whatever. So I called him aside, and we had a long talk about this thing. I made him promise me, you know, and he's a pretty nice guy, but I made him promise me he'd never bother that child because I said he's going to hear about Jesus every class he goes in. So he may get, and uh, he, he promised he would not do anything like that. He came to me last year. I went over to his house, and uh, we sat down with the Bible, and he got saved. Amen. Amen. So thank the Lord for that. Yes. <laughs> so I... I went over there a few days later, and I carried him one of them one-year-long uh, Sunday school books, you know, and to let him read it and whatever, you know, and whatever. A couple of days later, there's some of the guys come in and said, said, the Hakeem is going all over the village out there having Sunday school classes in these places and everything. <laughs> I don't believe it was nothing that I did. I believe that three-year-old child carried God's Word home every day and ask daddy about this, why and why and how it happened. And I believe with all my heart that's how he got saved. So we thank the Lord for that. And, amen. And this, the big guy there is Timothy. He's one of the pastors of uh, one of the churches that we work with and, and uh, help out over there. And uh, that, the other one is, uh, uh, I went blank. I got, I got caught up in the Peter other. Connie. Peter Connie, I'm sorry. Peter Connie, he's, he's our director. He, he takes care of all the buying of the food and all of those things for the, for the school and, and uh, the ministries and helps them, Lord, while we're not, while we're not there. And uh, he takes care of that. Here he is giving out Bibles and different things. So we thank the Lord for him, too. This is a piece of land that we've been praying for. We're in the uh, edge of uh, Ginger Town, where we live, but we're wanting to be out there near the school. This is a little piece of land. I think there's three acres of land right there that, uh, that's for sale, and we're trying to, uh, as the Lord provides, we're going to buy that and put our house out there and uh, some of the other people in the same area, like Peter and all of them, that they'll be out there, and uh, we'll be very close to the school then. So as the Lord provides, we'll take care of that. This is a family that they're the Overton family, and they are over there now. They just went over there full time, and uh, in February was when they first went over there. So y'all pray for them. They're still trying to learn the language and the culture and and all of those things. And they have four girls, and y'all just remember them if you will in your prayers. And he's he's did a good thing. At it. We got him a house out in another village. It's not too far from ours, but. Uh, we got him a house out there, and he, he started, we got him two guards. You know, you have to have guards night and day anyway. We had him some guards out there, and uh, the, he started Bible study with the guards. Well, the guards asked him, could they ask some of the neighbors there, you know, could they come in? And, and so, the, yeah, yeah. Well, first thing you know, on Sunday night, he's got 135, 45 people out there. So I believe the Lord's fixing to plant a church. And his wife has a uh, uh, Bible study for the children on Saturday afternoon, and uh, you can see part of them. Yeah, I heard the last time uh, I, the last, 
report we had from her, she had over 200 children coming to Saturday Bible study. So I believe the Lord is, uh, and he's looking at some land. Me and him looked at some just before we come home this time, and as the Lord provides, we're going we're gonna to try to get into that too so, so we can build a church out there. And this is our granddaughter. Uh, she came over there several years ago. Let's see, she was 14 when she first came over there. Then she came over there and stayed three months with us and uh, went out in there and uh, talking to the children, going into schools and, uh, you know, giving her testimony and they'd sing and everything. I think one week, the first week she was over there, they had 224 souls saved in those schools. So, you see... You young people, you young people sometimes will listen more to another young person than you will somebody as old as I am or whatever, you know. So, I mean, the, God can use you. It doesn't matter if you're that little. I mean, if you're using God's word, he, he can honor that. Now we're going to show you a few, a few pictures here and play a song and whatever, and then you just uh, put these pictures in your heart and in your mind and pray for a lot of these people that uh, that they'll either be saved or the Lord will take care of them. <laughs> thing to go over there and share God's word and see souls saved like that. Now, have you ever thought about what do you miss by being a Christian? Hmm? Have you ever thought of that? I saw this little track right here. Now, what do you miss by being a Christian? Hell. If you're a truly born again Christian, then you have made it. Thank the Lord for that. You know, we all have, have been truly blessed, and we don't even think about those things, you know. And uh, that is when we've sincerely asked Jesus to come into our heart and be our Lord and Savior. And uh, 
you know, a lot of people go get baptized and whatever, and that's it, and they don't ever do anything for the Lord and whatever. I, I don't know if, I don't think that's salvation. I think uh, accepting Jesus truly in your heart, not just in your mind or through your mouth, but through your heart, accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And, uh, you know, when we get saved, uh, that we, we've got a new life ahead of us. And I remember very well when I got saved, it was a new life for me. And, and uh, I've, I've had so much happiness and so much joy since then, it's unbelievable, you know, besides what I did many years before, you know, and stuff like that. In fact, uh, uh, one of my favorite verses is, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. Now, the reason that became such a tremendous verse to me was my first trip over to Uganda and everything, which I... I told the pastor I wasn't going over there and everything, but anyway, it worked out. That's a long story, I'll tell you. But uh, the Lord showed me that I need to be there. And uh, when, I, when I got over there, I went out. There was no one there but me and the pastor. And uh, they'd carry us out in the village, and he'd drop us off and leave us. And we had a little, I had an 11-year-old boy that was my interpreter. And uh, I went this way, and the pastor went that way out of the village into the jungles and what have you. And uh, I'd got out there, and I'd had 20-something souls saved that day, and I was so excited and thrilled. You know what I mean? You, you feel taller than the pines around there. I mean, and we got around there, and I looked down there, and there was uh, eight men down there, you know, and they was gathered around doing something. I said, let's go tell them about Jesus. And he could speak English and interpret for me. And uh, so we got nearly down there to them, and uh, they stood up, said something in their language. I didn't know that. And I said, what did they say? He said, they're going to beat the Mazungu. That's the white man. I didn't know which way to run or what to do or whatever, so I just stood there. And here they come. And they got almost to me. And they'll show you what he said. I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. The biggest one stuck his hand out like that. And there's already closest, closer than this. And he said, and I said, what? What did he say? He said, let the Mazungu say what he wants to say. I opened the Bible, and I began to share God's word with him. For about 10, maybe 15 minutes right there, I shared the gospel with the Lord and with him and with them and everything. And then I asked him, I said, does any of you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Seven of the eight men got down on their knees in front of the Lord right there and were saved. I'll never leave you, and I'll never forsake you. And there's so many times over there that he done things like that to me that he proved. Because I'd only been, my first anniversary of salvation was when I was in Africa. So, I mean, I didn't have the strength that I should, that I needed and all. And that's what he was doing, was giving me what I needed. But now, there, you know, there's many verses in the Bible that tells us what we need to do. But as a child of God, we need to do what our Father has told us to do. We must go out and tell people about Jesus. That's the most important thing we need to do. And in, in, see, in Colossians 4.17, it says, Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. We find many, many church people that has never led anyone to the Lord or never shared God's word to someone with the Lord. Now, it may, you don't have to go to Africa to do that. But a couple of years ago when we was at home, Teresa and I was in the uh, uh, Walmart. No, no, it wasn't Walmart. It was Kmart. Kmart, I'm sorry. We was out at the Kmart store there in Carrollton, and we was coming up to check, it, check out, you know, was buying something and what have you, and uh, there, was, there was an older black fella who was sitting at the end of the thing out there, and uh, I reckon he was waiting on his wife, shopping, whatever. And, you know, I would just smile at him, you know. And he, he said, how are you? And I said, I'm marvelous. I've got a habit that I guess the Lord done that. I said, I'm marvelous. And uh, he said, he looked funny. He said, how did you be marvelous? I reached in my back pocket because I never go anywhere without it. I've got my little New Testament right there in my back pocket. I, I got down right there. People going all around us checking out whatever, you know, and, Sometimes they want to say something, but whatever. I began to share God's word with him and everything, and then 
I ask him, you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Right down on his knees, right there in front of everybody. And he accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. See, my point is, it don't matter where you're at, share God's word. And be friendly and be loving to the people. And, and those things right there has a lot of souls that, that say, and I know you need to come to church. Every time the church is open, yes, you need to come to church. And, uh, and be a, but you need to be a servant to the Lord too. Like I said, in that scripture right there, he gave us a ministry. It may be right here, right downtown, wherever it is, but we need to be serving our Lord and Savior. And we need to thank him for saving us and thank him for all the things. You saw in these pictures right here all the things that those people don't have that we need to say thank you for and tell him how, how good he's been to us. And have you told him thank you because you got a Bible? Did you know there's millions of people out there in this world? I've been to India and, and Turkey and Honduras, whatever, and uh, several in Africa. and There's many, millions of people that ain't never heard God's word, and they don't have a Bible and they don't have anything. Have you told him, thank you, you got a Bible? Have you shared God's word with anyone? Have you read your Bible? You know, I've been in some houses visiting, and these houses, I mean, Bibles laying well for the under on, on the bottom shelf or something like that, and that is depressing. We need, I want to share, I want to start my day reading God's word. I want to finish my day reading God's word. Because I, that, I want to be closer to him than anywhere else. And I think that's what every one of us need to do. We need to be a witness for him. Don't ever be ashamed of sharing God's word. And don't care what, you know, somebody may say, you know, I go visit people at the, in their doors and sometimes they'll shut the door on me. I don't want to hear about that, you know, or something like that. No, but that's up to us to share God's word with each of them. And I tell you the truth, it's, like I said, I, I didn't get saved till I was 50 years old. And uh, I know y'all probably thought I was 20-something now, but, uh, <laughs> but I didn't get saved until I was 50 years old. And the Lord has blessed so many things and done so many things. There's many more things on here that, that you haven't seen and everything that God has done uh, to do that. And uh, I hope the Lord touches some of your hearts, Lord, that you'll have the desire to come over there and share God's word. And I guess one of my favorite verses was in Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 30, says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. I don't want to go before the Lord, and we'll all go before the Lord one day. I don't want to go before the Lord as a, a dummy, a fool, and that haven't done anything that he's told me to do, you know, what the Father has said to, for us to do. So I, I, I believe that that's the greatest thing in the world. And if you haven't had that joy, the greatest feeling you'll ever have in your life is when you have led someone to the Lord. You can ask the pastor about that and whatever. To lead someone to the Lord, if you stop and think about it, you ain't done nothing. But God has had his hand on you and speaking through you and using that word. And that's, the, that's what we need to be doing and everything. And just trust me, it's an honor to serve God and do his work and everything. Now, any, anybody have any questions? I'll just give you a chance to say something. Here comes. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. And uh, if they can't ask their questions here, they'll have to come out there because they don't want to turn the cake down. Okay, good. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we, we want everybody to go with us to the fellowship hall, and uh, we got some coffee and cake, and uh, we're going to give you an opportunity uh, this, this evening, and uh, we'll let them just stand up there, and uh, we'll just fire off questions at you and see how fast you can answer them, all right? Uh, I don't see Matt, so we sh it shouldn't take that long, because uh, he's, well, no, my mother's here, never mind, so never mind. <laughs> Oh, they, man, they got, them, they got them two people cornered this morning. Bam, 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 just firing off questions. So you've already questioned them, interrogated them. All right, are they good? Do you like them? Thumbs up, thumbs up. No, I'm just kidding. So, uh, but man, we really appreciate uh, them coming tonight.
And so um, I've really enjoyed hearing from them. And so I tell you what I want to do. I don't want to dismiss because if I dismiss, somebody might run to their car. And so I just want us just to move over there. All right? And, uh, but I, I tell you what, before we do that, um, I feel impressed to do this. Um, I don't know. I, we've had a lot of people come and speak. And, and I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not the end-all, be-all. Nobody needs my stamp of approval to be a missionary. But you can tell when somebody's doing a good work and when somebody's just kind of out on the mission field lost, uh, just, you know, kind of searching. And, man, these people have a work. They're doing something. I mean, they're getting something done for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I could be overly spiritual and say, let's bring them up here and pray for them. Or we could be practical and say, let's take an offering for them. Because uh, it takes money to do the Lord's work. And so I want to do that tonight. I want you all to come. If you all would bring... Uh, some offering plates, and uh, as they say, put your money where your mouth is, or put your money where your heart is. Uh, something they've said tonight, I know, like me, it's probably tugged on your heartstrings. And so, yeah, oh, I do need to ask you, who do we, if we want to write a check, who do we make it out to? Faithful servants, faithful servants right up there. All right, right up there on the uh, screen. Make it out to faithful servants if you're writing a check. And... Uh, so I just want us to take up uh, an offering for them tonight, just a way to say thank you for being obedient to the Lord and thank you for serving Him, and being the hands and feet of Jesus all the way on the other side uh, of the globe. How many of you would be honest tonight and say, I didn't even know there was a place called Uganda? Huh? Oh, there's some more y'all need to raise your hand. Amen. I was watching... Willy Wonka last night, and they said, where did they come from? And he said, Lumpa Land. And they said, there's no place called Lumpa Land. And some of y'all thought when he said that, you said, there's no place called Uganda. He made that up. But there he is, tucked away in the middle of uh, Africa. There is a place, and uh, there's people that need, uh, need the Lord. And, and boy, when you, when you see those faces of those children, man, doesn't that just move you? Uh, you can give them food, you can fill their belly for a day, but if you give them the Lord Jesus Christ, you can give them an eternal home in heaven. And I thank God for that truth tonight. So let's, uh, let's just ask the Lord to uh, prick our hearts to give cheerfully to their ministry. And I'm going to pray for them especially that God would use them continually as he already is in a mighty way. Lord, I pray that you would bless my brother and my sister, Lord, that we've just been introduced to you tonight and seen the ministry in the mighty way, Lord, that you're using them to reach souls and to reach people for the Lord Jesus Christ and how our hearts have been moved tonight just not by the sad condition of the life that these people live but Lord by the way that your gospel and your light is being spread and is being shared throughout the world Lord how that gives us a hope tonight uh, that the gospel is still moving on souls are being saved your truth is still marching forward in this world and uh, Lord we thank you tonight for the hope that we have in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and the hope that we have through brothers and sisters like these people that are spreading your word all over this globe. Help us tonight to be faithful to give. And uh, Lord, help us to, God, just, uh, God, in a way that only uh, you can give us a generous spirit, Lord, that we'd sow a seed in their ministry tonight. And Lord, only heaven will know what uh, our financial gift will reap as we send this money with them to go and do your work in Uganda. So you give us a cheerful heart as we give tonight. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. All right, let's pass these plates. Stand with me. Turn to 341. What a friend we have in Jesus.
food, and we'll meet you all in the fellowship hall. Dear Lord, we thank you for your blessings, Lord. We thank you for, um, God, we just praise you for who you are. You are God, no matter where, no matter what. God, you're doing a work, and um, God, we just, uh, we're just overjoyed to see what you're doing all over the world. God, right here at Young's Grove, we can just come and, and see how your, your ministry is just, God, what you're doing everywhere. And so, God, we thank you for these that have came tonight. And I pray that you'll bless their ministry. God, put a hedge of protection around them. God, I pray that you bless them spiritually, Lord, financially. God, meet needs, God, in the only way that you can. The only way that you can be glorified, God, through them. God, as uh, we rejoice as we see over 2,000 souls saved. God, just, God, half a year. God, what you're doing, that is amazing. You said, God, just because of one. God, the angels rejoice when one comes. God, 2,000, over 2,000. We just praise you for that. So, God, we ask you right now, bless our time together. Bless this food. God, bless those that have cooked and brought it. God, help us to have a good time with you tonight. We love you. We thank you. God, we praise you for what you're doing. For it's in your precious holy name we pray. Amen.